What even are current sources? <laughs> that is what we want to answer today. Welcome. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to E for everyone. We've got a great video planned for you guys today. And I'm super excited. We are launching a new series. What even is? And this is going to be a series that is really, really laser focused on current. We talk a lot about voltage sources because voltage is all around us, right? You got five volt USB. You've got, well, USB advanced power delivery that's like five, seven, nine, five, whatever. Don't worry about that. But you've got all these voltage sources running 12 volts, 24 volts, so common. But what if for just a moment we make a current source? What if for just a moment we make an LED driver? What if for just a moment we regulate current instead of voltage? Well, what are the big differences between a current source and a voltage source? How do we build one? That is what we're going to dive into in this series. I am very excited. Where we're going with this is very, very cool, so you're not going to want to miss out. Make sure to lean in. All right, current sources. We need to start this from a conceptual place. We need to start this from a place of learning. But don't worry, we're going to get somewhere really fun. Sip a coffee time. Oh, it's so much better when it's still hot. Engineers are not broken. We just like caffeine, okay? All right, what even is a current source? So, uh, if you look back at our old video, we did one on superposition. We talked a little bit about the differences between how you handle current sources and voltage sources while handling superposition. Okay, some simple truths. V is constant. I is unknown. And here we're saying I equals constant and voltage is whatever it needs to be. Now this is interesting, right? Why does this matter? Because in theory, they are pretty much interchangeable steady state for a resistive load, <laughs> a specific resistive load but the way that they respond to changes in load is very different. Let's apply that to something simple. Let's apply that to a resistor. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our current source and we're going to add a 100 ohm load. We're gonna do the same thing for our voltage source. So let's say for a moment that we've got a current source because that's the focus. Hey, look at that. We're talking about current sources today. So we've got a current source. And let's say that this is 100 milliamps. 100 milliamps through a 100 ohm load. Well, if we have one ohm, one amp is one volt. Wait, I jumped ahead. We have one of the answers already. 0 0.1 amps. Right? Because 100 milli, multiply that by 1,000, you end up with 0.1. We know Ohm's law, V equals I times R. So if we know R and we know I, hey, look at that. V equals 0.1 times 100, which is equal to 100 divided by 10. V equals 10 volts. Interesting. It's a 10-volt source. So we know that V equals 10 volts. Okay, we're solving the same problem from the opposite direction. V equals I times R. I think everyone in the room is saying, oh, I bet this is going to be 0.1 amp, and you would be right. Okay, why did we do that? Why did I just waste your time? I didn't just waste your time. Here's where we're going with that. Let's do a minor modification to the same problem two of those resistors in series. How do these two things respond? Right, we've got our 100 milliamp source. We've got our 10 volt source. What do we know? How do you expect this to change? Drop it in the comments if it's obvious and you know what's going to happen. I'm trusting you to be honest. Don't, don't just wait. Don't wait for me to like, do it right now. 
I'm just kidding. You guys are awesome. Do whatever you want. Uh, awesome. Okay, so let's think about the voltage and current again. And the current source, we've got 0.1 amp. Again, right? Voltage, same thing. V equals I times R, yada, yada, yada. 0.1 times 200 ohms, 20 volts. Interesting. Used to be 10, now it's 20. Current is the same. All right, what about our voltage source? Well, our voltage is still 10 volts, V equals I times R. So we need to rearrange that because we're solving for currents. That's V over R equals I. Voltage over resistance is current. Look at that, it looks like our current has halved. Fifty milliamps instead of one hundred. Okay. Let's think about this a little more. All right. We have a current source. As we change the load on a current source, an ideal current source, the voltage increases and current is held constant. And on a voltage source, voltage is constant and current changes. I just literally explained that, but now we're looking at it with numbers. Hopefully the numbers will speak to some of you, right? For some of you, this was probably enough. And you're like, all right, next, move on. For some people, walking through a simple example helps. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to accommodate different learning styles. Okay, so this is great, right? It really demonstrates the difference. And it's all about what you want to control. A couple things that you need to know. No current source is ideal. There is no current source that can produce infinite voltage. And much like voltage sources have a tolerance, like a 5 volt power supply is probably 5 volts plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 10%, plus or minus 5%. It has a tolerance. And likewise, current sources will be the same way they will have a tolerance. It will not be perfect, and that's okay. So that's kind of the concept here. Um, I suppose we could leave this video here, but I think there's more that we can do. And I wanna use this current source as a mechanism to finally solve a problem using mesh analysis. Let's do, uh, I don't know, 10 ohm, and then we'll do, uh, Ah, uh, let's, yeah, do a 10 ohm, and then like a 5 ohm, and then like a uh, 4 ohm. Should I make the math hard? Should I make the math easy? I'll make it a little harder. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish drawing this, because... The grounds imply that it's all connected, but yeah, okay, here we are. So we have current loop the first, we have current loop the second. So this is one of my favorite times to use mesh analysis because it's so super simple. So we know that I1 equals one amp. Why? There's a current source. It's fixed. It's constant. It's so easy. Uh, and you know what? Let's call this... Let's make this one a variable. Let's call this R1. Let's not make it totally super easy. All right. Got I1. It's one amp. All right, let's build our second equation. So our second one here. Remembering what we're applying. This is what we're looking for. So we've got an R1 and we've got these two other resistors. So we'll have a zero equals 10 ohms times I2 minus I1. That's accounting for the reverse polarity between those two sources. Plus, and I'm gonna need to jump down to the next line. Sorry about that. Uh, plus uh, five ohms times I2 
plus R1 R1 I2 R1 I2 Perfection. That should be the whole thing. Great. And looking to simplify this a little bit, we actually have some numbers that we can plug in. Look at that. Okay, so let's try to solve this for... Uh, what do we want to solve for? I2? What makes sense? R1? Do we want to solve for... No, solving for R1 as a function of I2 doesn't make any sense. Solving for I2 as a function of R1 makes sense. So let's say we wanted to set the current. Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's an example. We can solve for whatever we want. 15 ohms I2 plus R1 I2. Where did that come from? I combined this plus this. That's our 15, 10 plus 5. The, uh, our 10 ohm term and the negative I1 got pulled over to this side of the equation. OK. Now this gives us an opportunity to separate I2 out. So now we have a, wow, math is fun, isn't it? Woo-wee. 10 ohm I1 equals 15 ohm plus R1 times I2. Getting close, divide both sides by that, and we end up with a 10 ohm I1 over 15 ohm plus R1 equals I2. I1, we know, is uh, 1 amp. And if R1 was 4 ohms, that would mean we're going to plug 4 ohms back in. If we plug in 4 ohms for R1, what do we get? We get 0 0.526 amps. Now, this is where I want to encourage you to exercise what I like to call engineering intuition. I want you to ask yourself a simple question. Does this answer make sense and why? And I'm going to walk you through how I reason through an answer. It's the most critical step of any calculation or any analysis because there are simple fundamental truths of the universe that constrain these designs. So just go through a couple logical checks. All right. So we got slightly more than half an amp. We got slightly more than half of I1. Does it make sense that the current through these resistors would be slightly more than half of I1 when 4 ohms is plugged in for R1? Think about what we know. Current divides much like voltage. Right? If you've got a voltage divider with two series resistors, you have some voltage dropped across both. Likewise, for parallel paths, current will be shared. If these resistors are equal, they will divide the current in two. It will be split in half between the two branches. In this case, the branch that is I2 is one ohm less than the branch that is that this one, the one that I1 and I2 share. So does it make sense that a 9 ohm branch would have slightly more than half of the current as the 10 ohm branch? Yes, that answer makes sense. Now, if I were in any way unsure that this analysis was done correctly, if I was in any way questioning the validity of this analysis, here's what I would do. Also, sorry, apparently the camera froze at some point. Sad. I would plug in more points, right? I would check one slightly above. I'd do like 9 ohms. I'd do 11 ohms. I'd do 10 ohms. 
And if you spot check a couple of those fundamental truths at the end of your analysis, you can be pretty confident that everything worked out. Like, if our current was negative, if our current was more than one amp, if our current was zero, those would be massive red flags in my mind. Thankfully, we got through this analysis without any of those issues. To wrap this up, I just want to reiterate the fundamental truth of what we're talking about here. What is a current source? A current source is a source of electrical energy that regulates current instead of voltage. These are used all over the place. You just might not realize it. A lot of them are integrated into ICs, but they can be quite simple, and we're going to walk through exactly how simple they can really be. If you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by hitting that like button, getting subscribed, or leaving a like on this video. It really helps us out a lot. Coming up soon, we are going to be building a current source with a BJT, and perhaps finding some ways to improve that design with an op app. It's going to be so much fun, I can't wait. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon page linked down in the description. Really appreciate you guys who have chipped a couple bucks in the hat and decided to support us in this way. You rock. You're a big part of keeping this all possible. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thank you so much for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.